Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Immersive Engineering tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to go over the basics of power generation in Immersive Engineering using a couple of the low-end uh, power generators, as well as taking a look at uh, basic power storage and uh, transmission in Immersive Engineering. Um, there's a lot of different bits that go into this, but they're all very uh, simple uh, to make. There's just a lot of interim parts. So uh, we're going to go through it. It's not going to be uh, too difficult. Um, so uh, yeah. Before we do that, however, I just want to briefly mention something. I forgot to cover on the item silo um, and on the fluid um, tank, actually, how you get stuff out of these things. You have to put a lever or otherwise redstone signal into the bottom block. And then, if you have an inventory next to it, or a pipe, or a conveyor belt, or basically anything that'll take items, it'll continuously output. And if you put another one on the other side, it'll split it between um, between the both, so at the same rate. So that's how that works. I'm going to deconstruct this before the next episode, but uh, there that is. So, uh, power. The first two power generation devices you're probably going to want to get be interested in is the water wheel and the windmill. Uh, they both produce low level power, low voltage, and um, they're fairly cheap to make just requiring some uh, treated wood. So as soon as you get a coke oven built and get some uh, curious oil you can build these. Um, so let's get into that. We're going to look at how to build everything, craft everything, then we're going to go and, and build uh, some stuff, put these in the world, and uh, take a look at how much RF they generate. Because remember, immersive engineering uses redstone flux. So in order to build the water wheel, which you see here, which just looks awesome, I love it, you're going to need some constituent parts called water wheel segments. Um, and the way that you craft these is three... Wait, this recipe got screwed up. Why did it screw the recipe up? <sighs> I had it right, and then the workbench messed it up. There. So this is... <laughs> I don't know why that happened. This is how you craft a water wheel segment. It's um, three treated wood planks in a triangle shape at the bottom, and then four treated sticks surrounding the center treated wood plank. You're going to need uh, four of these. So if we go over here... To craft the water wheel, all you do is take four of the water wheel segments and stick them around a treated wood plank. And that gives you a water wheel. Alright. Now, the next thing is going to be the windmill. You might want to use the windmill instead of the water wheel. Depends. If you're living in a tree, it would be a great thing. Um, I don't actually know if it produces more power the higher up it is. But, we can build it, and it always turns like this and produces power. So in order to make the windmill, you need to make windmill blades. You can see a pattern here. To make the windmill blades, you take four treated sticks in a 2x2 two two at the bottom left, and then you put three treated wood planks on, two at the top of the stick piles and one to the middle right. Bit of a, a shape like that. And you're going to need, again, four of these. To craft the actual windmill, take four windmill blades and put an iron ingot in the middle. So surround an iron ingot with windmill blades, four of them, and that gives you a windmill. So it really does look in the world exactly how it looks when you craft it, which is nice. You know what you're getting. Now it's got a fairly large size to it, so you're going to want to make sure you leave enough blocks all the way around in order to actually place this thing. I mean, look, where I put it up there, it comes down right to the bottom of this tree almost. That's... that's um, if I count this up, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a seven by seven. So you need to leave seven by seven, um, well, 14, 15, actually. Right? 14 or 15, I think it's 15, uh, blocks square of empty space in order for it to go in. If it can't fit and you try and place it, it just won't go. So if you're trying to place the windmill and it won't go there, look around because you probably don't have there's probably obstructions in the way of placing it 
So, now we have the water wheel and the windmill. We can make power. The problem is, we can't actually get power out of these by themselves. We need another block that actually takes the rotational energy in these two things and converts it into power. And that's the kinetic dynamo. And to make that, the first thing we have to do is make a couple of constituent parts. First, we need to make some low voltage wire coils. Okay. Not only is this used to make the dynamo, this is the wire that you use to transmit the power in uh, immersive engineering. So to make this, all you have to do is take a stick, a normal stick, doesn't have to be treated, and put four copper ingots around it. That gives you four LV wire coils. So you get one coil per copper ingot. Okay? Now, next thing you're going to need is a copper wire coil which is the primary constituent of the kinetic dynamo. To make this, you need, you guessed it, the LV wire coils. So all you have to do is take an iron ingot and surround it with eight LV wire coils, and you get a copper wire coil block. You can, it's a block you can place in the world, but it's also the component for the kinetic dynamo. So once you have that, to make the dynamo itself, just take your copper wire coil, Put a redstone on the left and the right, and put three iron ingots underneath it. It really does make a lot of sense, because essentially all this kinetic dynamo is, is the copper wire coil inside of like a metal frame. So it's kind of neat. It lines up, in, it looks like what it's made out of. So now that you have your kinetic dynamo, you can actually make redstone flux from the windmill and the water wheel. However, we want somewhere to put it. Um, either you're going to transfer it directly into a machine, or you're going to put it in one of these. This is a low voltage capacitor. It can store up to 100,000 redstone flux. And it's pretty cheap to make, actually. You're going to need a lead ingot, and then it's three iron ingots along the top, a lead ingot in the middle, copper ingot on the left and the right, a redstone at the bottom middle, and then a treated wood plank on the bottom left and bottom right. So it's not very expensive, and lets you store 100,000 redstone flux, which is pretty good. I'll show you how to use that when we start actually setting things up. Now you can't just run this wire between blocks. You need to use these things. Low voltage wire connectors, and there are medium and high voltage versions of all of these things. To make a low voltage wire connector, you need three copper ingots up the middle, and then a hardened clay in each corner, and that gives you eight. So it's, it's pretty, you know, cheap, pretty cost effective. You get eight of them for this recipe. So you're probably going to make this recipe once, and that's going to be good enough for quite a few machines, really. Quite a few. You can hook up quite a few things using just eight of these. I mean, yeah. So that's how you make one of these things, the LV wire connectors. Now, if you're going to transmit power over a distance, you might want somewhere to put these connectors. So you might want to make a wooden post. All right, you can put a wire connector on top of this and string your power lines. Make it look all fancy and cool and realistic. It's not completely necessary, but it's pretty awesome. So if you want to make a wooden post, it's super cheap. It's just a stone brick with two treated wood fences on top. And that gives you the wooden post. Now you may notice that there's a little thing sticking off the side of the wooden post in this picture, but not in the world. In order to get one of those sticky out bits, you whack the top, the side of the top block with a wooden, uh, with an engineer's hammer. And it puts a little thing on there so that, I don't know what to call this, so that you can stick another LV wire connector on it. If you whack the other side, you can get another one. You can only get two of these, You can, and uh, you could do either side, but you can't do this side and this side at the same time. They have to be across from each other. So that's the wooden post. And then when you're working with wires, the engineer's wire cutters are going to come in handy. All right. Because once you've strung some wire between two of these, if you decide you want to take the wire off, you can just use the wire cutter and right click and it'll just pop the wire right off and you can pick it up. So the wire cutters are crafted with an iron ingot and two treated sticks. Alright, now we've got everything crafted that we need to start producing redstone flux using immersive engineering. So let's get to it, shall we? Now in order to use the windmill, which is probably the easiest one to use, you're going to want to find a high up place where there's nothing around that it'll hit. I'm going to use this tree 
And what you want to do is stick down your kinetic dynamo. When you place the kinetic dynamo this side with the, um, the wire coil with a little dot in the middle will always face you. That's the side you need to stick the windmill on. After a few seconds it'll start turning. And now we're technically producing power. But the kin kinetic dynamo doesn't have any internal storage. So we need a way to get the power out. So I grab my LV capacitor. You also can't just stack it on top. It doesn't work that way. The blocks do not transmit power between them uh, via touch. What we need to do is place a wire connector on top of this thing. And if we look at our connector, it actually has an internal buffer of uh, RF storage. It's got 256 RF in there. So, so they act like a RF storage buffer. Let's come down to the ground and place down our LV capacitor. Now the LV capacitor has different sides to it. We can see that the top side here has a blue dot, and this side here has an orange dot. If I whack this with an en a side with an engineer's hammer, I can place a blue dot or an orange dot on it, and I can take the dot off of any of these sides. All right, The blue is the input, the orange is the output, and you can switch it to any side. You can have as many inputs as you want, as many outputs as you want. You're going to need to have at least one input, but you can have as many, you can have five outputs, you could have five inputs and one output, whatever you want. So if I place a wire connector on top of this, and now I want to connect these two together. The way I do that is I take my LV wire, and I right click it on this connector, and it'll tell you linking from and the coordinates of the connector. Then I go up here and I right click on the one I want to connect it to. Now the wire kind of goes through the side of this block, but it doesn't really matter. Now these two things are connected via a wire, and if I look at the capacitor, it's charging. I'm not actually sure how many RF per tick this is generating, but it looks like it's producing a pretty good amount of RF per second. Several hundred at least. So that's pretty good. Alright. And now, if we wanted to use this power for something, we could simply stick an LV wire connector onto this output. You can stick them on the sides. Doesn't matter. I can stick one anywhere I want. I can connect the wires together. Now this one isn't getting any RF, and that's because it's not actually plugged into anything. So the system is smart, all right? So that's that. Now let's take a look at the water wheel. Setting up the water wheel is a little bit more complex because you need to direct water flow it over it. You're going to need to build like a little framework around it using whatever blocks you want. I'm just going to use treated wood planks. I have a little area set up right over here. So what I've done is I've created a line of treated wood planks. One, two, three, four, five, six blocks long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to surround this with a U-shape of my planks. Seven blocks long. All right, just like this to make a channel in the middle. Now on the third block from the right, I'm going to build up. And I believe I need to build up that many times. However, I'm going to build up twice, then I'm going to put my kinetic dynamo on top of it. Then I'm going to place my water wheel. The water wheel is five blocks wide. One, two, three, four, five. So you need to make sure you leave enough room. Now, this here is enough room for the water wheel. What you want to do is you want to direct water to flow from the top of the water wheel around it down one side and then back around underneath. All right. That gives you the maximum amount of power output. If I just slapped a bucket of water on this, it would spill off all over the place and it wouldn't actually give me any power. So I'll grab my bucket of water. What I want to do is I want to build a channel. I want to build a frame that directs the water. Now you want to place your source block of water, not on the block directly above the water wheel, but on the block just to the side of that. Okay? Because then what will happen is the water will flow from there around and down. I like to look at that. I mean, you could do it straight from the top. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. But you want to build some blocks across, like this, until you get 
right around over here. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five blocks long, just about. And then you want to place a block underneath on each side. Now the reason you need to do that is if you don't, the water will get to this point, it'll spill off the ends of the water wheel, go down the sides, and lower your power output. Now that we've got this set up, you can see what it looks like. If I stick water here, it'll flow down the water wheel, it'll flow back around underneath the water wheel, and then it'll start turning. Now, the water wheel turns black um, off and on, at least in this texture pack, I mean this uh, uh, resource pack I'm using with my hardware. I'm not sure what's causing this to go black, but it does come back and uh, go not black. It's just kind of weird. So now that we've got our water wheel set up and it's turning, we could do the same thing we did before. I'm going to use a wooden post just to show you how it works. If I wanted to place a wooden post, like right here, then I'll like, uh, I don't know, whack this and uh, stick my connector there. Now what I can do is I can stick my wire connector on my Kinetic Dynamo. Use my wire, stretch it over here to my uh, wooden post. And now I can stick my LV capacitor, I don't know, down here. So wooden posts are great when you want to make your wire turn a corner. Of course you could stick that on almost anything. And we can hook it up. And now we're generating power. It generates quite a nice amount. It's going very very quickly. I am pretty sure the water wheel is producing much more power per tick than the uh, windmill. Let's go see how much the windmills produced in the time that we've been working on the water wheel. Wow, 72,000 RF. But yes, the water wheel definitely produces power more quickly. Look at that. It's catching up. It just takes a bit more setup. Now, here's the thing about the water wheel, though. This, you're not limited to just one wheel. Alright, let me stop the flow of water. And show you how to expand this setup. Because you can actually stack water wheels up to three in a row. So, two, three. You can stack water wheels three blocks thick. Like that. So now we want to expand our little trough. Expand this bit. Go over here, go down. And place our water. Flow the water over all three water wheels. And they will all start to rotate. Now, it is going pretty slowly. But it takes a while to speed up. Because there's more water wheels, it takes longer to get up to speed. But we are now producing power at a much greater rate. Quite a bit more power. It should be triple the power. Very, very cool. I don't know why they go black again. I, I, they shouldn't do that. But look, we've almost filled this LV capacitor already. So you can produce a lot of power using three stacked water wheels. If you wanted to use more water wheels, you'd have to leave a gap and then stack three more. But these can only be stacked up to in groups of three at max. So yeah, that's the water wheel. Look, we filled our capacitor. Capacitor is full. Awesome. Now we can we could easily slap down another capacitor, stick a connector there, and connect these two together. And now it'll fill both of them. So, immersive engineering's power system is very scalable. These wires allow you to connect very long distances. Remember, though, that it takes one piece of wire per connector, no matter how short or long it is. They do have a maximum length, which is why you would need to use these wooden posts in order to uh, chain it along until you got to your destination. But there you go. Two ways to produce power in immersive engineering. So, in future episodes, we'll talk more about the power system, we'll go into the other voltages, we'll see other more advanced power generating uh, methods, as well as uh, some power grid accessories. In our next episode, however, we are going to talk about the 
blast furnace so that we can get our hands on steel, which is uh, a very important resource for pretty much all of the other, all of the big machinery that you're probably looking to get for in immersive engineering. But I mean, even if all you're looking to do is generate RF, I just filled another capacitor with 100,000. So yeah, it's pretty good. So stay tuned for future episodes. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.